Hello everyone. So today we begins with the physiology of gastrointestinal tract and in this video we are going to cover the physiology of large intestine. Now emptying at the ileocecal valve due to the peristalsis movements whatever the food is present or the, whatever the food substances is present in the proximal part of the duodenum are pushed towards the terminal part of the ileum and at the terminal part of the ileum there is a ileocecal sphincter is present and it opens into the cecum which is the proximal part of the small intestine so that is the cecum here it is the ileocecal sphincter and as you already know that the sphincter is just like a open and closed valve so fluidity of the contents which promotes the emptying so whatever the fluid content is present inside this uh, terminal part of the ileum it having the positive effect over the emptying of the ileum into the cecum pressure and chemical irritation relaxes the sphincter and excite peristalsis so whatever the food particle or the fluidity of the food particle is present over here it is having the some pressure and chemical irritation effect which relaxes the ileocecal sphincter and uh, excite the peristalsis so that the peristaltic whatever the peristaltic wave is moving towards the terminal ileum it pushes the food towards the cecum as the ileocecal valve is open pressure or chemical irritation in cecum inhibits peristalsis of the ileum and excites the sphincter so what will happen once the food enter into the cecum the food particle inside the cecum so what will happen it is having some pressure and chemical irritation of the mucosa of the cecum so it inhibits the peristalsis of the ileum and excite the sphincter so that the sphincter will close or the contraction of the sphincter so that the opening will be closed so that is how the emptying at the ileocecal valve is occurring so the cecum it is located at the junction of small and large intestine the functions it is similar to rumen in ruminants they having the microbial activity and digestion of the feeds it contains a microbial population which is similar to the rumen and having the cellulolytic and hemicellulolytic bacteria these microbial cell proteins these are not available to the host and it is lost inside the feces so that is what the occurring inside the cecum as there is a presence of cellulolytic and hemicellulolytic bacteria so now we begins with this large intestine anatomy it is composed of three segments starting from the cecum colon and rectum the colon again having the three parts ascending colon transverse colon and descending colon function so what is the functions of the large intestine absorption of water volatile fatty acids and minerals mass movement which move fecal matter to towards the anus usually only few times a day so inside the large intestine the movement of the large intestine occurs only few times a day and having the digester storage this is associated with the defecation so the movement of the large intestine occurs only few times a day so that whatever the food particles or feces is it pushes towards the rectum and there is storage of the feces occur inside the rectum so that is what the functions of the large intestine rectum it is the muscular area of large intestine which is used for the storage of feces and ultimately for defecation feces includes the slop cells undigested food and microbial matter so what is the composition of feces it includes the slop the cells undigested food and microbial matter so all of these about the large and small intestine now what is the role of dietary fibers so dietary fibers bind the bile salts and increase their excretion in the feces less bile salt enter the liver by the enterohepatic circulation more bile salts needed to be synthesized in the liver so utilizing the cholesterol
and resulting in the decrease the level of serum cholesterol so here what will happen the dietary fibers going to bind with the bile salts inside the intestine and once the dietary fibers binds with the bile salts the enterohepatic circulation of the bile salt is not occurring so whatever the bile salt which is binding already with the dietary fibers going to be excreted inside the feces so there is a pure loss of the bile salt and liver must have to synthesize the bile salts in a new way from the cholesterol so what will happen due to this the ingestion of large amount of dietary fibers the cholesterol level becomes decreasing as it is converted to the bile salts so there will be the decreased level of serum cholesterol when we consume the higher amount of the dietary fibers intestinal bacterial activity so there will be the synthesis of vitamins such as vitamin c a number of b complex vitamins and folic acids these are all are the vitamin c and number of b complex vitamins are formed by the intestinal bacteria play a role in the cholesterol metabolism so they having the some of the role in the cholesterol metabolism there will be the production of intestinal gases this intestinal bacteria this is also one of the side effects as there is a production of the intestinal gases consumption of nutrients like vitamin c vitamin b12 by some bacteria may lead to the deficiency consumption of nutrients like vitamin c vitamin b12 by some of the bacteria which may lead to the deficiency so once the these vitamins are produced but it is also consumed by the different type of bacteria which is present inside the intestine this leads to the deficiency of these vitamins and the uh, side effect will be the production of the ammonia the intestinal bacteria act in such a way that they produce the ammonia and it having the harmful effect over our body movements of the large intestine most important hostrations so first movement of the large intestine it is the hostrations it is the longitudinal and circular muscles contract and forming a bag like structures mainly mixing movements the hostrations mainly having the mixing function more surface area for the absorption and more prominent in the proximal colon so inside the proximal colon this hostrations is more prominent and the next movement it is the mass movement of the large intestine it occurs 3 to 4 times a day the circular muscle contract mainly propulsive movement propulsive movements means it propels the food contents towards the rectum so that is what the mass movement gastrocolic reflex so gastrocolic reflex means whenever the food which is present inside the stomach after the meal it produce the mass movement of the colon so that is the gastrocolic reflex 10 to 20 cm area contracts at the same time so in the mass movement the 10 to 20 cm area contracts at the same time more prominent in the distal colon so having the more prominent actions of the mass movement inside the distal colon and it is responsible for the defecation so that is the movement of the large intestine inside the large intestine the two movements are occurring first one hostrations and second one mass movement this is the large intestine so here it is the terminal part of the ileum which opens into the cecum this is the colon the colon having the three parts ascending colon transverse colon and descending colon and later it is here it is the rectum and this rectum opens into the anal canal and lastly the anus and food or feces will be coming out from our body now what will be the changes occurring inside the content of the large intestine so once the food which enter into the cecum and in the proximal 
part of the this ascending colon it will be in the fluid in nature later it will be converted to the semi fluid in the transverse colon it will be the mass at the ending of the transverse colon it will be the semi mass and in the descending colon it is converted to the semi solid and inside the rectum it is converted to the solid so if the motility of the large intestine has been reduced it causes the greater absorption and hard feces in the transverse colon and it causes the constipation if the motility of the large intestine reduce or the poor motility it will having the or it will cause the constipation excess motility causes less absorption and diarrhea or the loose feces so whenever the large intestine motility has been increased it will cause the diarrhea